Smear and CC Smear are both found under the Distort category, and they have basically the same name. One's made by Adobe, the other one by Sycor FX. So they do similar things, but in a very different way and to a different level of detail. So let's just start with CC Smear because it's simpler, and I'll apply it to an adjustment layer over top of my logo in this grid. We just have four controls. So let's take a look at what they do. We have a from point, a two point, reach, and radius. The from point is defaulted to the center of my comp, and this is where the distortion will start. The two point is where that distortion travels to. So this is why it's called CC smear, because we're basically smearing what's underneath it from that from point to the two point. The only other control we have is the ability to change the reach, which is basically how much distortion is happening. So at 100%, the center of this point stretches to the center of this point, but I could dial that back or animate it this way. I could even push it beyond 100. And we can control the radius, which is just how wide this column is basically between these two points. So the radius is the size of the distortion and the reach is how much pull there is between the from and two points. But that's all for CC smear. Now the smear effect, which is definitely an older effect, takes a little bit more to set up. We need two masks on our layer to start. So I'm gonna start by making a mask that's just a circle and I'll put it right in the center of the layer and I'll rename this mask Source Mask. You don't have to label this, it's just for organization and I'm going to choose that as my source mask. We get this new overlay, but then we need a boundary mask and I'm just going to double click on the rectangle tool to make a mask the size of my comp and I'll rename that one Boundary Mask. And I'll choose that as my Boundary Mask. So what these two masks represent are where the distortion is coming from and what part of my image or the layer this is applied to is actually going to be distorted. So that's why I made the Boundary Mask the size of the layer so that it affects everything. But if I scaled this down, then this effect is only going to distort whatever this mask contains. Now I'm still not seeing any distortion, and that's because my percent down here is set to zero. So this is an animatable distortion effect. If I increase this up to 100%, then I'm going to get some distortion. So how can we manipulate this distortion? Well, with these three properties, mask offset, rotation, and scale. The offset is just the position. So if I align this to the center of the layer, again, we don't have any distortion. But if I click and drag it over to the left, then everything is getting stretched over to the left. So this right here is the representation of the shape of my mask. If I were to change the mask, it's going to change shape as well. So imagine I'm taking this portion of this distortion mesh and just dragging it over here. This is where the source mask is and this is where I'm manipulating it too. Pretty straightforward. Let me put it back in the middle and then go to the next property, which is mask rotation. If I rotate this, then it's going to twirl around at that point. And I can combine that with the position as well. Let me set that back down to zero and then we have the mask scale. So if I scale this up, it's basically going to bulge it out or if I scale it down, it will pinch it in. And at any point I can animate this percentage from zero to 100. Next up is the elasticity and this is really just a quality basically. And the further down this list you go, the higher quality the image will be, but the longer it will take to render. So I'll move it up to normal and that will basically give you a higher resolution distortion mesh and better looking distortions. But if you need to work fast, just leave it down at the default of stiff until you're ready to render. Finally, we have interpolation method. Linear actually doesn't mean anything unless there are keyframes on this percent value. So if I set a 0% keyframe at the start and go forward about two seconds and change it to 100%, I'll press U to bring up those keyframes and play this back. We're going to get a linear interpolation between those two states. Even if I easy ease these keyframes, and go into my graph editor and really crank up this speed graph. You can see that this is not affecting the animation at all. So linear is overriding this interpolation that I'm changing down here. But if I change it from linear to discrete, then it's going to calculate every frame independently for this distortion mesh, and it will take into account any easing that I've applied on those keyframes. The last option is smooth, and this actually requires three keyframes. So if I move my percentage down to a lower number, and then maybe go up to a higher number, and then add one more keyframe here from a lower number than 100%, then this easing is again going to be completely negated. So if I take off all of my easing by controller command clicking on it, you see that my animation didn't change at all. But because it's set to smooth, it's going to smoothly interpolate between all of these keyframes. 
so it's sort of like an easy ease for this specific effect. But with that, we've covered all the controls for this effect, and that's really all you need to know for smear and CC smear. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.